No one passes 50 on day one as the bowlers hold sway at New Road. Worcestershire had surrendered top spot in Division 2 after a six-wicket defeat by Lancashire, while Middlesex returned to action after a week off, still looking for their first championship victory of the season as they made their first visit to Worcester for four years. The home side won the toss and chose to field, but they had a wait before doing so after early morning rain delayed the start for half an hour. Middlesex had turned down the chance to bowl first, but that looked like a poor decision when the division's leading wicket-taker Charlie Morris struck in his first over. Holden caught behind for a duck. Robson and Gubbin set about repairing that early damage and scored pretty quickly in tricky conditions. They put on 41 when Robson fell, LBW to Josh Tongue for 16. That brought Middlesex skipper David Milan to the wicket on his return to the side. But the visitors couldn't make it to lunch without losing another wicket. Gubbins bowled by Whiteley for 27. But with Milan looking solid and new man Eskenazi playing his shots, there were no further dramas for Middlesex and 97 for 3 at the interval represented a reasonable foundation to build on. The next task was for this partnership to develop further in the afternoon and Eskenazi continued to dominate the scoring. But when he'd made 27 with five fours, he became a second victim for Whiteley trapped LBW. But just after they'd passed 150, Middlesex suffered a real setback when Morris returned to the attack to have Milan LBW for 45. And in the next over, Barnard, who'd suffered an injury in the morning session, proved his fitness when Harris was the fourth batsman caught in front and gone for 12. A new pair, Simpson and Roland Jones, attempted to mount a recovery. They had some success, but once again, another promising partnership wasn't to last. Leach had Roland Jones caught by Vessels for 12. And it was definitely Worcestershire's session when Tung chipped in with his second wicket. Helm caught behind for one, and they took tea with Middlesex 191 for eight, five wickets lost in the afternoon. Nathan Souter dominated a partnership of 30, but he became LBW number five to Tung this time, and it was 221 for nine which became 221 all out in the next over when Simpson was dismissed by Morris for 35. Three wickets for him and Tongue, and Middlesex were surely short of a competitive total on this wicket. But perhaps not because they made early inroads when the home side batted. The hopelessly out of form Mitchell edged Helm behind for just three in the second over, and the same combination struck again soon after to remove Rhodes for four. Worcestershire had reached just 11 for two from their first 10 overs, but when Callum Ferguson came to the crease, batting suddenly looked much easier. After two failures at Old Trafford last week, he refound his form quickly, hitting eight fours on his way to 37. Opener Tom Fell was playing rather more patiently at the other end, but Worcestershire couldn't make it through to stumps without one more setback. Ferguson LBW to Roland Jones to leave them 64 for three, still 157 runs behind. A day for the bowlers at New Road, and both sides will believe they can grab the upper hand on day two. Milan puts Middlesex in control after host collapse at New Road. It was honours just about even on day one at Worcester as batsmen on both sides struggled. Dawid Milan's 45 turned out to be the highest score of the day as Middlesex were bowled out for 221 and then reduced the home side to 64 for three in reply, still 157 runs behind. Worcestershire opener Tom Fell had been the model of patience on day one when compiling 18 runs. He'd added just one to that overnight score when he was castled by an absolute beauty from Tom Helm. Fell's 19 scored from 95 balls. And the home side were in real trouble when Helm struck again in the same over. Tung, his fourth victim of the innings, caught by Souter, and it was 75 for five. Perhaps mercifully, the rain arrived after half an hour of play and forced a stoppage that turned into an early lunch with the score 85 for five. But when play resumed, the Worcestershire collapse simply continued. No more runs had been added when Vessels was bowled by Murta for seven. And it was 85 for seven when Helm completed a hugely impressive fiver in the next over, Whiteley the man to go with Eskenazi taking the catch. Cox and Barnard nursed the home side's total into three figures, but only just before Barnard was trapped in front to give Murta his second wicket. And ten runs later, another LBW decision accounted for Cox, Harris the bowler this time, and Worcester was still more than 100 runs behind Middlesex's first inning score. 
Last pair, Leach and Morris managed to edge the deficit into double figures, and with the captain taking the lead, they began to frustrate the Middlesex bowlers. Leach hit seven boundaries in his 32, and Morris weighed in with three before he was LBW to Souter to bring the innings to a close. A stand of 40 for the last wicket could be significant in such a low-scoring game, but at 156 all-out, Worcestershire still trailed by 65 runs. Helm the standout bowler with 5 for 36. After the tea interval, Leach continued to be a thorn in Middlesex's side, this time with the ball in his hand. After Robson had hit two of his first four balls to the fence, he was trapped LBW in the Worcestershire skipper's second over. And Leach did the same to Holden in his third, and at 20 for two, Middlesex's lead was still manageable for the home side. But Gubbins and Milan moved that advantage past 100 runs and proceeded to build a partnership that broke Worcestershire's spirit and stretched Middlesex's lead into match-winning proportions. So far this season, their batsmen have struggled to turn starts into big scores, but this was an opportunity that Milan wasn't about to waste, the captain finding his best form as he charged towards a century. In the end, it came off 121 balls with 14 boundaries and served as a useful reminder to the England selectors before this summer's Ashes. With Gubbins scoring a slightly more sedate 72, which still included 10 fours, the visitors closed on 195 for two, a lead of 260. They are well placed to push for victory on day three. Rain shortens day three, but Middlesex maintain upper hand. An unbeaten century from captain Dawid Milan put Middlesex in control at the end of day two, after paceman Tom Helm took five wickets to dismiss Worcestershire for just 156, Milan's 107 not out saw the visitors reach 195 for two at the close, a lead of 260. The home side needed help and they got it from the Worcester weather. Early morning drizzle turned heavier and it was clear we were in for a lengthy delay to the start of play. Lunch and a 3pm inspection came and went but finally the umpires decided to make a start at 4.45 with 28 overs to be bowled in theory. The long delay didn't seem to affect Milan and Gubbins, who simply picked up where they'd left off the night before. And the partnership had reached 201 when it was finally broken, Gubbins drilling Morris to Vessels at backward point and out for 91. Having waited 201 runs to take a wicket, Worcestershire had another one run later. Eskenazi caught behind by Cox off tongue for just a single. With Middlesex looking to score quickly, Harris tried to cut Morris away and instead edged to Cox who took a superb catch and the visitors had lost three wickets for 46 runs in this mini session. And the one Worcester wanted arrived soon after. Milan missed timing a drive and caught by Whiteley in the covers off Barnard's bowling. And the fans that had stuck around got their reward as Simpson hit Leach for four and then lofted one back over the bowler's head for six. Stump soon followed with Middlesex 287 for six, a lead of 352. They may decide to declare overnight, and if the weather improves, Worcestershire face a battle to save the game on day four. Murta masterminds Middlesex win as Worcestershire collapse again. Only 21 overs were possible on day three due to rain, which frustrated Middlesex's push for victory at New Road. But they moved on to 287 for six, a lead of 352, and Worcestershire's batsmen surely faced a tricky test on the final day. And that test would begin straight away after Middlesex declared on their overnight score and set the home side 353 to win. A total that was still a long way off when Tom Fell edged Tim Murta to Sam Robson in the slips with just five runs on the board. And Worcestershire were in trouble when Murta struck again a few overs later. Rhodes LBW without scoring and batting out the day seemed a slim prospect. But Darrell Mitchell, who's been in poor form of late, had other ideas, and along with Callum Ferguson, he navigated Worcester to the lunch break without further incident. The pair added 82, and at 91 for two at lunch, they had at least given their team a chance of saving the game. That chance faded a little in the first over after the interval as Ferguson departed without adding to his 43. Murta the successful bowler again. And two balls later, he had his fourth wicket. Vessels caught by Milan for naught, and at 91 for four, Worcester were on the slide. Newman Whiteley dug in with Mitchell, and the opener eventually reached his half century, but that was where his resistance ended. 
Mitchell playing onto his stumps and the Worcestershire innings needed a new anchor. Whiteley looked ready to play that role and added useful runs with Cox before finally another Middlesex bowler had some joy. Cox nicking to Simpson for 14 to give Tom Helm his first wicket and edge the visitors closer to victory. And just before tea they moved closer still when Barnard was caught behind off Roland Jones for 11. Just three wickets required by Middlesex in the final session of the match. When play resumed, Worcestershire did at least take their total past 200 as Whiteley completed his 50 before Murta had another success. Skipper Joe Leach bowled for 11. But that was the end of Murta's haul for the day as James Harris mopped up the final two wickets. Josh Tung caught by Eskenazi for two. And Whiteley's resistance was finally ended when he was caught by Robson at slip for 60, including nine fours. Worcestershire 225 all out to give Middlesex victory by 127 runs. An impressive performance by the visitors, especially with two sessions lost to rain on day three. Milan and Murta the heroes as they pick up 20 points. Worcestershire well beaten, take just three. <laughs>